Minister Justin Trudeau has his own illegal immigration crisis north of the border. Border crossers are clogging the asylum system in Canada and flooding the homeless shelters. So the Canadian government has a new solution to all of this. Move hundreds of immigrants into hotels where they will live at public expense. Stephen LeDrew is a former president of the Liberal Party of Canada, and he joins us tonight for an update on all that. Stephen, thanks a lot for coming on. So I, be on Canadians are famously good-humored and tolerant and, and sort of, I would say, a little bit passive maybe. But are they for this? Are, is anyone saying anything? Well, you're not, you're not passive, that's, and we're I'm glad not, to have I, you. And I don't mean to – I love Canada. I'm not attacking Canada. But, like, I, what do they think well, of this? Come on. Come on up for a holiday. We'll give you a free hotel room. Um, first of all, <laughs> the, 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 the 800, Tucker, are just those who are now in, in, uh, in school classrooms and in school uh, dormitories. And they have to be cleared out in order for the classes to come back towards the end of August. So those 800 are going to hotels. But that's only the thin edge of the wedge on this one because last year we had over 20,000 uh, illegal asylum in, um, seekers. This year, by the end of May, I think we had over 5,000. So there's thousands and thousands. And the mayors, particularly John Tory, the mayor of the city of Toronto, are saying we can no longer accommodate anybody. So the 800 going into hotel rooms, I hope it's not the Four Seasons or the Ritz, uh, but that is just a small number of them. So you asked about Canadians and how they're responding. Canadians are very generous. Uh, we have an empty yes. country up here. We could take a lot of people here. But on the other hand, they don't like to see their dollars uh, being wasted. So it comes around to the fact that these people seeking asylum, Tucker, and you know this, they aren't coming into the regular border places where they are processed. They are walking across, and uh, the government of Canada could stop that with just, just uh, you know, a signature on a piece of paper. They could stop that for three months at least. Uh, but they haven't done that. So Canadians are getting upset about this. On the other hand, they're also looking to the states and saying, well, why are all these people in the states and they're coming to Canada? Why aren't they staying in the states? They aren't being kicked out of the states. So that's a question for your Maybe president. it's because, well, maybe because Canada has more generous benefits and Canadians are even more well, guilty than Americans. Well, it's a heck of a lot colder. A, yeah, it is. It's much, it's much colder. So your prime minister, who I don't think really gets the credit he deserves for being a buffoon, no offense, um, is basically telling Canadians they're not allowed to complain about this. You're a bad person if you're against this, I think is his position. Well, he's saying that on a lot of matters. I mean, they, uh, he's been singing the same tune uh, since he's been in office, uh, talking about, you know, you know, gender equality and all kinds of stuff. He's had a lot of failures over the last year, and people are starting to, yes. uh, he's starting to wear thin. So I don't think the Tories, we're having a campaign, we're going to have an election, uh, Tucker, in uh, 14 months. They haven't started saying yet build a wall and make President Trump pay, as he's saying with Mexico. But it could come down right. to something like that because Trudeau <laughs> is, in fact, saying not only on pipelines. I mean, we paid one of your Texas companies $4.5 billion, with a B, billion dollars. That may not be that much in the States, and Canada is a lot of money. We paid them a pipeline, that much for a pipeline out west because we couldn't get them to agree with all the terms of it and all kinds of other protesters. I mean, he is in you trouble. Know, I, meant, on, I meant to thank you for yeah. that, by the way. Stephen, we're out of time, but I just want to thank you uh, for injecting that much out into time? the American economy. <laughs> 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 it's great to see you, no. Stephen LeDrew from Canada. Good chatting as always. Well, doesn't see pay. That's what they tell you in school. Though increasingly there's evidence that maybe it does in fact pay. Consider all those career politicians who somehow wind up rich in the end. And then there's Omar Kadar. If Kadar lived on your street, he'd probably be the richest guy in your neighborhood. How did he make his money? Well, first he joined the Taliban. During a firefight with U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan in 2002, Kadar threw a grenade that killed a Delta Force medic named Christopher Spear. For that, he went to Guantanamo Bay. He later pleaded guilty to murder there. Lucky for Kadar, he was born a Canadian citizen. So after being released from Gitmo, he sued the government of Canada for his imprisonment. And here's the remarkable thing. Canada settled with him. This month, Justin Trudeau's government awarded Kadar more than $10 million and issued an official apology for being mean to him. Prime Minister Trudeau later conceded he had not bothered to talk to Christopher Spears' widow before any of this. Instead, he defended the settlement as a win for human rights. Watch. I can understand Canadians' concerns uh, about the settlement. Uh, in fact, I, I share those concerns about the money, that's why we settled. The measure of a society, of a just society, is not whether we stand up for people's rights 
when it's easy or popular to do so. It's whether we recognize rights when it's difficult, when it's unpopular. Michelle Rempel is a member of the Canadian Parliament and she joins us tonight. Michelle, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for having me. Is this a measure of the justness of Canada's society, do you think? Well, first of all, you know, for your viewers here tonight, I want you to know that most Canadians are absolutely outraged about this. Uh, you know, they're outraged because of the payment itself, how the payment happened, and the fact that, you know, the way that it's happened has probably preempted and prevented um, Tabitha Spear from seizing any of those assets. So, right. uh, you know, uh, assets belonging to the father of this man, the Kadar's That's father. correct. So, you know, I, I, I think while a lot of your viewers have just seen this statement, they should also know that most Canadians, I think, are quite outraged and quite disappointed by the state of affairs. It doesn't seem just. I mean, there are probably a lot of people in Canada, including some who've probably been mistreated legitimately by the Canadian government who could use ten and a half million dollars. How did this guy get it? Well, and the thing to recognize here is this was a settlement. This wasn't any sort of payment that was awarded by a Canadian court. This lawsuit that Mr. Cotter had filed was being litigated, and there was no court ruling, right? This was something that the government decided. And so what was disappointing for me as a legislator and many of my colleagues was that this decision happened after our House of Commons, which is, you know, similar to your Congress, yes. rose for the summer. So right now we're not sitting, right? We usually have an opportunity to ask questions like, why did this happen? What was the government's motivation? And that didn't happen. So I think that that's where there's a lot of concern about this particular decision, yes. that it's been made in a bit of a vacuum. And now we're just getting dribs and drabs so of why, what's happening. So why was it made? Why did the you know, that's, do that? that's really a question for him. I think many Canadians would have preferred to have seen this play out in a court of law. The Prime Minister has said that this was done for some sort of, you know, financial reason to save money. But the reality is that this was a decision that was made by his government and not by a court of law. And I think that that's quite confusing and quite outrageous for many, many Canadians. So there's an effort online in Canada to raise money for the family of that's right. Christopher Spear, Tabitha Spear, but also yes. for the other soldier who was, who was greatly That's removed. right, uh, spearkids.ca. I think that the last time I checked, there was oh close to $200,000 that had been raised by the Canadian public. And what you have to understand, too, that this is not like a partisan political issue. This is something that people who actually voted for this government are going, I'm not comfortable with this, right? You have to understand that Canada values, you know, the relationship that we have in terms of our men and women in uniform serving shoulder to shoulder with each other. Right. And I think that there's a lot of people that are just going, how did this happen and why? And again, that's a question for our prime minister to answer. Why wouldn't he call the widow of Christopher Spear first? Again, you know, I, I, I'm sure that's something that he should answer for, but I know that our former Prime Minister Stephen Harper has reached out to her. Um, I, I can't imagine being her right now and listening to all of this coverage and having this have those wounds reopened. Um, I think that we have to be cognizant about her and her uh, compassionate to her and her family in, in the first instance here. And then, I, you know, to me, that's at the core of Canadian outrage over this. So, I mean, again, as long as we're passing out $10 million checks to people who say they've been wrong, this guy would not even be on the first hundred on that list. So you've got to wonder, was this a way of giving the finger to the United States? I think that this should have played out in a court of law. You know, Mr. Cotter has a appeal to his conviction that's pending in your government. He's had this case in front of the Canadian government. This is a very serious situation all around. You know, there's uh, our Supreme Court has said that his, his human rights were violated. To me, as a legislator, I want the judiciary to make a decision on this. Yes. And Last that's what hasn't Canada's happened here. Government and I, I want to be perfectly clear. awarded more than $10 clear. million Canadian where... dollars to Omar Kadar to make up for the terrible suffering he endured while imprisoned at Guantanamo Bay. After giving this man the money, the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, admitted he didn't even bother calling the widow of Christopher Spear. He's the Delta Force medic who was murdered by Kadar in 2002 in a grenade blast. Kadar himself, meanwhile, says he wishes everybody would just move on and forget what he did. So this is a time for, you know, reconciliation and hopefully not forgetting, but, you know, moving on and healing. I was angry or upset about what happened, but it's, it's been hard, you know, finding jobs or going to school and stuff with uh, my past reputation. So this is going to help me move forward. Yeah, ten and a half million dollars from Canadian taxpayers. That'll help you move forward.
One man who can't move on quite so easily or seamlessly is Sergeant Lane Morris. He was blinded in one eye during the same firefight that killed Christopher Spear. Sergeant Morris joins us tonight. Sergeant, thanks all for coming on tonight. Um, what what do you make of this? Thanks What's your response me, to this? Oh, I you know it's I think I've said this before. What what kind of sick and twisted ivory tower do you have to live in as the Prime Minister of Canada That's to right. decide to award this man 10.5 million good hardworking uh, Canadian folks' dollars to, to equals justice? It just it makes no sense. It doesn't, and it's I think it's more a statement about the decadence of the West than it is about the man who perpetrated uh, this crime. D this is almost a rhetorical question, but did the Prime Minister contact you before the settlement? No, he did not. Uh, first I heard about it was when uh, my phone started ringing from, from Canada. Former Prime Minister uh, Stephen Harper contacted me to apologize on behalf of Canadians in general and, and, uh, and the military folks up there, and I, I thought that was nice of him. I don't think there's any evidence that most Canadians agree with this or for it um, at all. Is that your sense? It, it is, and and you know, and that makes perfect sense. I don't think you've got to be Canadian or American to say, right. okay, there's a guy out there who killed the U.S. soldier, and now you're going to give him 10.5 million dollars because he had a he had a he was lonely at, at Guantanamo, or he didn't have a shoulder to cry on. It just you, you just how that balances out as justice is just beyond uh, me and I and obviously Canadians. I think I've seen polls that 70 71 percent of Canadians are outraged by uh, by this action. It's the definition of decadence. T tell us if you would, and if it's too painful, don't. But about the day that all of this happened. No, I, you know I don't. Uh, I, I have no problem talking about it, uh, Tucker. We were after uh, Omar. Uh, Kadar's father, who was bin Laden's finance guy. Uh, the compound, the isolated compound we went to, uh, his father was gone. Omar was there with uh, four or five other guys. Uh, we surrounded that compound, myself and four other uh, soldiers. We waited for 45 minutes. They wouldn't come out and talk to us. When we finally got uh, the rest of my team there, as well as some Afghans that we were working with, uh, when our interpreters went in to try and make contact, the guys inside that compound just popped up over a low rise uh, inside the compound and executed them point blank, threw hand grenades at the rest of us. Uh, we shot two or three of them right there at the gate, and as the uh, as the others.